Hey, it's Andrew again. I'm just checking in because I feel like the Lord wants me to make a video right now. And uh, I know that if I'm to talk right now, it's really going to waste your time. So I'm really hoping that God is going to talk through me. Otherwise, it's going to be a huge waste of time. So I really don't like doing this whole video thing because I, I'm the kind of person that wants to minister to a person's heart, to someone's heart individually because I know that there's individual needs and I know every person is different and they've suffered their, their own affliction and they need a, a personal heart towards their heart. And so it's really hard for me when I have, a, what, 200 people that look at this video and I have to minister on a broad scale and I know God can do that. So I'm really going to try to step out of the way because I can't do that. Because I, I know the individual needs and how important it is for someone to get fed on a personal scale. And so I'm really hoping that this is going to feed your soul because I was re reading in Isaiah 55 today a really a, ver a verse that popped out at me and it hit me. And it said that, uh, you know, you why do you buy food that will not uh, feed you? And Jesus pointed to himself in the New Testament and said, I am the bread of life. And when I was reading that, I was thinking to myself, why do I buy, why do you purchase bread that will not satisfy is one of the lines in Isaiah 55 in the very beginning. And I was thinking about how the, wor the bread of the world does not satisfy. And how I tried everything in the world. I, I tried to cover myself with all this insecurity and doubt and lies and like, I don't know, all this insufficient stuff that wasn't God. And, and it, it filled my flesh. It was like a cup of the world is what I was carrying around. And Jesus said in Isaiah 55, really popped into my heart and it like broke my heart because I said, yeah, I've been looking after things that will not satisfy. And this world does not satisfy, only Jesus satisfies. And he pointed to himself and he said, you know, I'm the water of life. Drink from me and you'll never be thirsty again. And and that, that verse says, Come all who are thirsty. Come all who are thirsty. And I know that I can thirst after my flesh and thirst after the world and thirst after security and lies and get nowhere and just die. But if I thirst after God and His righteousness and, and forget about myself for once, then I can be full in my spirit because I'm making it about Him. And it's hard, it's easier to say that than to do that because, but I know when I was reading that verse that I, I looked at it and I said, yeah, I have totally seeked after the world and everything in it. And I hope some of you out there aren't being critical of me right now and, and trying to find fault because there's a lot of fault in me. And I'm not claiming to be perfect, but I just want to share something with you that I read in the Bible. And it really made an impact on me because only that intimacy with God that I've been seeking after has done anything to even tap fulfillment for me. Only getting to know the love of God by whatever fraction of grace that He's given me to know Him has given me sufficiency and made me happy, fulfilled. And I could talk about a bunch of different stuff, but right now I'm just focused on, on the bread of life, Jesus Christ. Bread that will satisfy. Uh, water that will... You, you know, it says, why do you waste your wages? And I say, why do you waste your wages on this stuff? It doesn't even fill you up and make... Why don't you... You know, he's referring... I think he's going to the New Testament where he says, I'm the bread of life. He's like, eat my flesh, you know? Like, eat me. Eat the word. And you will be satisfied. And... I find that to be really, really true. And I find that the world has a lot to offer and a lot of distractions and unfulfilling distractions. And I myself can make it about myself. And 
or I can make it about God. And sometimes I think that we unknowingly make it about ourselves saying we're making it about God. And I know I do that. And and I just really want to get my eyes on Jesus. I really have this desire to pray for me. And I want this bread that will satisfy because I'm so sick of things that will not satisfy and I'm so sick of seeking after myself and vanity and and lies and stuff that doesn't fulfill me at all and and I still do it I still seek after that stuff sometimes pray for me I want the flesh on one side and on the other side I want the spirit and I have to choose and you have to choose what what do you want more God and his kingdom or the flesh and its cup of world of a bunch of lies that are trying to take you away from true bread true life because this feels real because you look at it and you can see it and it's material and this is spirit and so this the whatever weed or whatever you're doing whatever flesh that feels real is a fake lie delusion and, and here the spirit is, is the real and God has impressed upon me that this is where I'll find my fulfillment and I'm insufficient and I need His Spirit and I can't do anything apart from His Spirit that just me and all that I am is a bunch of trash that wants all this stuff and it's true and I'm telling you the truth and I want the Spirit because of the heart that God put in me not because of my corrupt heart my corrupt heart wants all this stuff, and it thinks I will be filled here. But the spirit within me knows that only God on this side, the, the spirit, not the sinful nature, is going to fulfill me and just consume me with happiness, with joy of the cross, which the cross we all know is a sign of suffering, a, a big symbolism of suffering, which somehow joy is found when you're that broken and that contrite and that close to God because he wants to be close to those broken and contrite because his word says so and I learned that and I'm telling you the truth so if you're prideful you're not going to find God I didn't and I was very prideful and I don't want to be prideful anymore I want to know who I am in comparison to God I want to know I want to stand before me and God not me and, and this guy down here and how am I compared to him? Because I'm not smoking and he's smoking, so uh, I must be holy. No, I, I stand before a holy God, a really, really, really holy God. And I, and I look at myself as insu insufficient and in need. And he, ch he changes me and transforms me so that I don't want this fleshy stuff and I want this spirit stuff because I've learned the difference and I've learned that this, this sin and world will only fulfill me for a time. And it says in the Bible somewhere that Who's going to choose to to want to enjoy this, the pleasures of sin for a time? Because they're going to go and they're going to experience death. And I think a lot of Christians are, are experiencing death. And they say they're Christians, they love Jesus, but they want the pleasures of sin for a time. And and they think that though they pray this prayer and they're saved. and then But that's so not biblical. And they want the cup of the world. At the same time, they, they look at the Spirit from a distance and... But I want the Spirit here. I want it in me. I want the kingdom to be revealed from within me. And I'm telling you the truth that right now, the kingdom of God is coming out of me and going onto this video screen. And whatever part that is anointed of God is going to affect your life. And the seed is going to be sown into your life. And you're going to be changed. And you're not going to be the same. And I'm, I'm doing this right now because I'm insufficient, because I'm incapable, because I need God. Not for you. Not so I look cool. No. Because God, because I love Him. And, and this is some truth that you might need. And if that is, then bless you. And I love you.